Hi YouTube, um, this is Tom again. Uh, I had previously recorded part two of Camp FEMA, but I'm re-recording it on just from my webcam to here. So we left off last time at, um, I got dropped off at this place in the middle of the woods in New York on top of a mountain, not knowing what was going on, except these two big Italian men came into my house at 4 a.m. and took me. So anyways, um, I had these two students or, or two guys about my age come to the car and greet me. Uh, they brought me upstairs, uh, up, the, up the steps, because uh, it was on a mountain, um, to at this uh, school. It was, it was a big school, and there was like a statue of Mary out in the front, and I was like, okay. So... Um, we go in the school uh, and into the men's bathroom uh, where they uh, then proceed to tell me to take off my clothes, uh, all of them, underwear, everything, um, duck down and squat, you know, for like drugs, I guess, and whatnot. The last thing that I thought coming there was, you know, drugs, even though, you know, I was sent there because of my alcohol and uh, marijuana habit. Um, but, um, anyways, uh, I was 16 at the time, uh, that this happened. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, they told me to duck and squat, then they gave me the shampoo and said it was like a, like, d or lice, uh, to get rid of, just to make sure you don't have any. And, um, so they told me to go take a shower and, um, their system's all messed up, so of course it was like an ice cold shower. It was 8 a.m. in the morning. I had no sleep. I was n had no idea what was going on. I honestly thought I was going to be gassed like a Jew. Honestly, I the day the way that day was going, I I was afraid for my life. Um, I had no idea what was going on. Um, but anyways, uh, fast forwarding. Uh, got done with my shower. Uh, then uh, another kid met. Uh, up with me, and he was all happy and bubbly again, and he was like, oh, come this way, now you get to, um, go to our family or whatever, and then he takes me to this other building adjacent to this school-like facility, um, that's a, it's, it looks like a big house, and it's divided into eight, uh, big rooms with, like, uh, subrooms in there, like two or three subrooms within these big rooms, and there's eight of them. There's like a girls and guys bathroom for each one and whatnot, and there's eight of them. Anyways, um, each, um, sector, one through eight, is a family, and, uh, you know, let's call it the Family and Foundation School, and, um, you know, so family one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I was assigned to family six. So, I go up to Family 6, and, you know, they introduce me, and there's, like, uh, a table in a U-shaped where everybody sits at. Uh, students on this side, students on this side, students on this side, students on this side, but at the head of the U, right here, is where all the, I guess, family leaders sit and whatnot. So, um, I was introduced to them, introduced to my family. There was like 20, 30 people in my family, um, as is was every family, pretty much 20, 30 kids to a family and about three to four staff in there. And usually only two family leaders, one for a mom and one for a dad. Um, and then usually two other family leaders, or two other, you know, staff members. Sometimes there's a lot more. Um, so anyways, I got introduced to that. Um, and I was being shadowed around by my, uh, junior sponsor, which the, the school goes by the 12 steps, uh, 12 tradition, whatever, of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And this school believes, just like the cult of Eastridge, that you have a problem no matter what. And that problem can what? Be cured by the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. So, uh, you gotta work your program there, and, uh, after a while, if you don't get moving with your program, you'll get in all sorts of trouble, and this was just the beginning of the pains and aches at the school, 
Um, it was corrupt. Uh, but I'm glad that I went to the school because if I didn't go to the school, I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now because the way school worked was a metaphorical analogy to how our, the corruption in government works now in the United States. And like the family school, which is collapsing now, America will collapse in the footsteps of family school. Anyways, to proceed on what we were talking about, we um, uh, were eating and whatnot, and they, uh, this was my first day still, of course, and they, the family leaders or whatnot, had a kid talk at one the, the table right there, and the person was like, so-and-so, can you please stand up? And he, I guess he asked this person to stand up in front of the table, and he addressed them with an issue and whatnot, and uh, the family leaders and whatnot just started yelling and screaming at them, and I was like, well, what's going on and whatnot? And I guess apparently the kid brought the other kid up for lying about something, and it was a huge issue or something like that, so then the family leaders were literally screaming, like screaming at this kid to the point where they, they cried. Um, and the next table topic wasn't the best, too, because you can bring, like, uh, we usually get, like, two or three table topics, that's what they're called. Um, so you can call two to three people up in a, um, uh, I guess, in a meal, um, depending on how long they go. But uh, the next one after that, bringing the kid to tears, the next one, the girl was so upset that she passed out because the people were yelling at her so much. Um, but the problem with this, like, honesty first or whatever, um, there was a big flaw in it because it was a bunch of 16, 17-year-old people that were holding themselves accountable to, you know, things that... Uh, it was just so ridiculous. So you had people out of spite bringing up other people at these table topics, you know, just because they could. So, it, it was just a mess at the end of the day, um, some of these table topics. So, um, and, and rarely did uh, people get caught in, uh, you know, manipulating these table topics when they were manipulated. And, um, you know, if you masturbated guys or girls, you were supposed to come up and tell everybody about it um, at, at the table topics. And, uh, you know, if you did something else that was, like, really small or whatnot, you could be, um, I, I, like, God forbid, if you flip out, you get sent to the isolation rooms. And when I ran away the first night, because I was so freaked out by what, what I saw, uh, they stuck me in the isolation room for, like, 15, 16 hours or whatnot. Um, and they charge, you know, your parents and family members this, like, $180 an hour or something like that for to keep you in that. And I didn't know about this, so then, well, you're not allowed to talk to your family either um, in phone calls. Uh, so, well, for the first month, that is. And then after the first month, then it's every week you get a, a five to ten minute phone call with your family. Um, and if you tell your family about, you know, how you feel about the school, um, then you'll get in big trouble. So then they had a, a rule of, you know, your junior sponsor or whatever is supposed to sit in with the conversation with your parents so you don't say anything like that. Um, so it's just very, very warped. It, it, and that, that was just, like I said, it's still the tip of the iceberg of all, what all they did there. Um, some of the stuff was ridiculous. And they only went through Catholicism. If you were other than a Catholic, then they'd try to convert you to a Catholic. And luckily, my sponsor wasn't corrupt, so the bigger sponsor, because you have your bigger sponsor, which is a staff member, and your junior sponsor, which is not a staff member, it's a kid um, that tries to chaperone you or whatnot. Anyways, um, but yeah, luckily, my sponsor um, was ballsy enough to go against a lot of the rules, and he knew that I was uh, Baptist, so he snuck in a uh, St. Uh, or not, what am I thinking, King James Version of the Bible, and uh, nobody still knows to this day uh, that we snuck it, or that he snuck in the Bible, and we got to read it, but it was just, it was really, it meant a lot to me, and, uh, you know, God got me through a lot of those days at this facility, because I was there for a year and a half, um, and I only got to go outside of this facility two times, three times, and that was within a couple miles away from the facility, um, so I was I was literally stuck there. It it was, it was a FEMA camp pretty much, 
um, conditions were not as bad as a FEMA camp, but sometimes I wondered with their mind games that they did. Um, time's up for this video. I will make another one. Um, but I will just leave off of my experience. Uh, this will be my experience gap uh, time period of being there from zero to three months. So anything that I talk from now on out, from here on out, is going to be three months and, and on. Uh, because that's when life got exponentially harder for me at this place. Um, because as I was learning more, the more and more I was learning about the corruption behind everything. But um, I will talk to you guys later. Hope you have a great night. Bye.